high above the dry plains of the Serengeti. Clouds conceal the crater of an extinct volcano called Ngorongoro. Two million years ago, it was a pit of fire and boiling lava. Today, it's a cauldron of carnivores. Eighty lions stalk the crater floor, but one pride has risen above all others. They are the Lakeheads, led by a great hunter, helped by her daughter. They have hunted and killed their way to supremacy. But during the coming week, everything will change. As this pride comes under siege, they will battle eternal enemies. And finally, a surprise invasion. Who will survive in the cauldron? Serengeti means endless plains. On the vast savanna, great herds of wildebeest and zebra roam. And predators are free to hunt them. But in the southeast corner of the Serengeti, there is a place where everything is different. The crater of this extinct volcano was only 19 kilometers wide. And is surrounded on all sides by cliffs reaching almost 700 meters high. Here in the highlands, temperatures drop quickly. But on the crater floor, Tensions can reach a boiling point. This cauldron is home to the most densely packed lion population in Africa. An area of 164 square kilometers contains the territories of six prides. The largest pride the Lakeheads control the prime real estate. With access to the fresh waters of Lake Magadi and Gorigor Swamp, along with shade from the Larai Forest, their territory is a third of the crater. Defending it is Moran's job. His name means warrior in Maasai. Weighing 230 kilograms, he's built for battle. His large, dark mane serves to intimidate his rivals. With so little space available in the crater, conflict is inevitable and sometimes deadly. Moran has ruled the pride for three years. But male lions are not his only enemies. He must also fend off hyenas. Ancient enemies that hunt the same prey and live on the same land.
one-on-one -on -one lions easily outweigh their tenacious foes. But while they are smaller, there are 380 hyenas here in Ngorongoro. They outnumber lions almost five to one. Hyena clans pose a serious risk to unprotected cubs. And any isolated and weak lion With Moran around, the hyenas won't come close. While he's a formidable warrior, he doesn't always assist in the hunt. In daylight, his large, dark mane makes him highly visible in the grass. So he leaves most of the hunting to the specialists. With stealth and speed and strength, Females are better designed than males to hunt. For over 17 years, this lioness has perfected her talents. She has mastered the art of the stalk, honed the timing of her ambush, strangled the last breath from hundreds of her neighbors. Over the years, Malkia has taught these skills to her pride. But one student has surpassed the teacher. She is Malkia's daughter, Moja. Together, mother and daughter are a superb team. Their success feeds a growing pride. The Laquettes now number 19 lions, six lionesses, five juveniles, seven cubs, and Moran. For the Laquettes, a buffalo is the ultimate prize. Gorogor Swamp in the heart of Lake Ket territory is an established watering hole. It's midday, and as the temperature in the cauldron rises, the buffalo need to quench their thirst. They weigh over 700 kilograms and lions are the only predators that regularly bring them down. Today should have been a success, but Moja, the pride's best hunter, hasn't been seen in three days. Her cubs are also missing. At 17, Malkia is now too old to tackle a buffalo alone. Without Moja, the other hunters must improve their own skills. Each adult needs at least 10 kilograms of meat a day. Between all of them, that's almost 135 kilograms. Unless Moja returns to help, they'll have to attack and kill something big and dangerous without her.
Just three degrees south of the equator, sunset and sunrise arrive quickly in Ngorongoro Crater. When dawn breaks on the following day, Malkia calls to her daughter Moja. But there's no response. Malkia's hunger is growing. To feed her raging appetite, she needs her daughter's help. But today, again, she may have to hunt without her. Southeast of Lake Magadi, two of the young females stalk the open plains of the crater. In the pale grass, they are perfectly camouflaged and virtually invisible to prey. At least three million years of evolution have prepared them for this moment. It's thought their ancestor looked a lot like a leopard. A solitary hunter, stalking and ambushing small animals in thick forests. But sometime in the past few million years, as the region became drier, the forest began to disappear and open up into grassy plains. The creature traded its spots for the pale yellow coat now required as camouflage. It evolved to hunt larger prey. It grew in size and developed bigger weapons, longer, stronger legs, and jaws powered by huge neck muscles. These hunters are built to kill on the open plains. But their larger size has a drawback. They can only maintain their best speed of 55 kilometers per hour for about 90 meters. The cats must get close before they strike. If the warthog sees them, they'll lose their chance. Claws sheathed, they inch forward. Although each lioness weighs around 135 kilograms, they barely make a sound as they approach. The young cats have blown their cover, and an awareness of their presence ripples through the area. Today, with Moja missing, they still have difficulty hunting successfully. But five kilometers away, in the Manduzi Swamp, Fortune favors their eternal enemies. An adult buffalo is a rare feast for hyenas. They are not big enough to actively hunt such a huge neighbor. 
this one is trapped. The hyenas begin eating the buffalo alive. quickly before lions and other hyenas discover their feast. Above the crater, vultures watch the activity below. They wait for others to do it for them. And if a resident dies of natural causes, vultures watching from the air are likely to be the first to detect it. They'll get there before the carcass attracts other scavengers. With superb vision, their eyes zoom in on anything dead or dying. And on the western side of Lake Magadi, something attracts their attention. It's Moja. Flies gather on open sores. She is thin and weak. Four cubs are nowhere in sight. Her illness could be an ominous sign for all of the crater lions. In 1962, a plague of stable flies struck in Gorongoro's lions. Covered in festering sores, they became too weak to hunt. The population shrank to ten. Today, the lions living in the crater descend from that small group of survivors. But these relatives inherited a disturbing legacy. Their immune systems are weak from decades of inbreeding. Twice in the past 12 years, disease wiped out many of Ngorongoro's lions. And Malkia lost some of her best hunters. It might be happening again, starting with her daughter. Moja doesn't recover soon. She will be unable to defend herself. <laughs> On the crater floor, the Lake Camp Pride has been unsuccessful for three days. So today, one of the young hunters tries a different strategy. At the edge of the Lurai forest, a small herd of Grant's gazelle takes turns drinking from a pool. Always wary, Grant's gazelle can reach speeds of over 70 kilometers per hour, much faster than a lion. But if the hunter can get close enough, she could surprise one.
Unfortunately for the young lioness, the gazelle ran the wrong way into marshy ground. The struggle alerts the rest of the pride. They get their first taste of blood in days. But it's only 70 kilograms of fresh meat. This single gazelle won't satisfy the lake cat's huge appetites. Unlike lions, hyenas don't need stealth. They have stamina. They can chase their quarry at high speed for three kilometers without tiring. Although they ate an adult buffalo yesterday, these hyenas hunt again today. A hyena clan might have 80 members, but their search for meat never ends. Unable to outrun them, this wildebeest collapses from exhaustion. Their powerful jaws and specialized teeth are designed to crack bone. Other carnivores may waste up to 40% of their victims. But hyenas consume and digest almost everything. In less than 15 minutes, only the stomach contents and horns remain. They leave little for the vultures waiting above. The vultures scan the crater floor below for other possibilities. By watching each other, vultures as far as a hundred kilometers away can learn about a possible meal. Now, one by one, they follow each other to the skies west of Lake Magadi. And circle of Moja. Malkia's daughter clings to life. So the vultures wait. But they are being watched. Hyenas scan the sky, using vultures like beacons to find an easy meal. The vultures unknowingly lure Moja's enemies to her exact location. As night falls, an eerie quiet descends over the crater. Then, the whooping of hyenas shatters the silence. They surround Moja. She summons the strength to face them, but the hyenas press their advantage. Moja was a great hunter, but now she's the hunted.
tonight, the moment belongs to her enemies. When morning comes, there is no sign of Moja. For Malkia, the disappearance of her daughter is a blow. But the loss of Moja's cubs is even more serious. Cubs are a pride's future. Now the three surviving cubs in the pride are more valuable than ever. For the adults, it's been almost a week since they ate their fill. Malkia is starting to weaken. And in the cauldron, the weak die. Malkia and her hunters can't afford to let another chance escape them. On the southern edge of Gorogor Swamp, the Lakeheads have a new opportunity to make a big kill. Buffalo have poor vision. They are only 30 meters away. But in the dim morning light, they can't see the pride. While they don't see very well, buffalo can smell predators over 150 meters away. This time, luck is on the lion's side. They're downwind. Cats fail again. The other two buffalo take cover in the swamp. They'll simply wait for the pride to move on. The pride is still adjusting to hunting without Moja and Malkia has now become too slow to help in the chase. But hunger isn't their only problem now. There are enemies just outside their territory. Four powerful male lions lurk on the borders of Malkia and Moran's home. Now that they're over three years old, these nomadic lions have been chased out of their own prides in the crater. Today, they've set their sights on a big prize. The Lake Cat Lionesses. Nomads are now sexually mature, and they want to mate. But to 
win control of the pride. These young males will first have to get past Moran. Moran has protected Malkia and her pride for three years. He's been victorious against invaders before. But now he's eight years old and almost past his prime. If the challengers come close, he will have to defend his pride again. But this time, it will be one against four. If Moran fails, his cubs may die. It's a cruel truth of nature. When a rival male wins a pride, he will try to find and kill the cubs fathered by the previous male. The cub's death brings the lionesses into heat and gives the new male a chance to mate. By now, Moran senses the nomads are nearby. He smells them and he makes sure they smell him. His potent scent around the perimeter of Laycat territory is a clear warning. But the nomads ignore Moran's warnings. They invade Laycat territory. For almost a week, the Laycats have gone without food. Their best hunter is gone. And with her, four cubs. Three other cubs still live. But now even they are in grave danger. Their father, Moran, patrols his territory. Four nomadic males hide somewhere in the long grass, waiting for the right moment to strike as darkness shrouds the crater. The great pride finds itself under siege under cover of complete darkness in the heart of Lakehead territory. The nomads finally reveal themselves. They've killed a wildebeest. They are feuding over the carcass.
over 135 kilograms of fresh meat on these bones. And with their rough tongues, the pride licks them clean. For now, the lake cats and their remaining cubs are safe. But for how long? The nomads will grow more confident and probably return to challenge Moran again. For as long as he can, Moran will defend Malkia and the Pride. But there are some things he can't protect them from. The crater needs new blood. But it is rare for an outside male to find his way in. Around the rim, Human villages further isolate the lake cats from outside prides. Until this changes, inbreeding and disease will continue to threaten the lake cats' future. In Africa's increasingly fragmented wild places, the future of other isolated prides is also in doubt. Moja and her cubs will never return. And Malkia's long reign is almost at an end. The pride's remaining hunters must now succeed on their own. They will battle to survive another week in the cauldron. High above the dry plains of the Serengeti, clouds conceal the crater of an extinct volcano called Ngorongoro. Two million years ago, it was a pit of fire and boiling lava. Today, it's a cauldron of carnivores. Eighty lions stalk the crater floor, but one pride has risen above all others. They are the lake cats, led by a great hunter, helped by her daughter. They have hunted and killed their way to supremacy. But during the coming week, everything will change. As this pride comes under siege, they will battle eternal enemies. And finally, a surprise invasion. Who will survive in the cauldron?
gives up It's like life has no meaning yet Anymore and I see it as a game Why are you happy with your new lover? But no matter what I do all my life I still love you like an open leg Rest of my life know that there is no time to see you Why is my heart still dreaming of Felt you happy desire Still sweet make me have mine same land. One-on-one -on -one lions easily outweigh their tenacious foes. But while they are smaller, there are 380 hyenas here in Ngorongoro. They outnumber lions almost five to one. Hyena clans pose a serious risk to unprotected cubs. And any isolated and weak lion. With Moran around, the hyenas won't come close. While he's a formidable warrior, he doesn't always assist in the hunt. In daylight, his large, dark mane makes him highly visible in the grass. So he leaves most of the hunting to the specialists. With stealth and speed and strength, females are better designed than males to hunt. For over 17 years, this lioness has perfected her talents. She has mastered the art of the stalk, honed the timing of her ambush, strangled the last breath from hundreds of her neighbors. Over the years, Malkia has taught these skills to her pride. One student has surpassed the teacher. She is Malkia's daughter, Moja. Together, mother and daughter are a superb team.
Their success feeds a growing pride. The Laquettes now number 19 lions. Six lionesses, five juveniles, seven cubs, and Moran. For the Lake Cats, a buffalo is the ultimate prize. Goragor Swamp in the heart of Lake Cat territory is an established watering hole. It's midday, and as the temperature in the cauldron rises, the buffalo need to quench their thirst. They weigh over 700 kilograms, and lions are the only predators that regularly bring them down. <laughs> 